well, I think it's Friday. I've been called off work again until Tuesday of next week. That's going to be good. Nice invisible paycheck. So, it's 5.30 in the morning. Electricity goes out and it's 6 degrees outside. And man, am I thankful. I got a broken kerosene heater chooching in the back and got plenty of candles, oil lamps, I got like eight oil lamps, and I got my little wood burning stove. So today is the test to see how good this thing actually does. Kerosene heater can handle pretty much the whole trailer on its own. Because it's good. It's a thousand square foot kerosene heater. And my trailer's 900 foot. But it takes a minute. So the back part of the trailer is going to get the heat first. Because of where I got it sitting at the end of the hallway. It looks like it suckers on fire. <laughs> like crazy from the camera. But it's just... It just set it high. It just looks normal on my end. And then I got this little wood burning stove. And I tell you what, when I had a small to medium fire in here, it didn't take no time for it to get this water in this pot hot. But I stoked it extra heavy. Well, extra heavy compared to what I normally do. And that's what we got now. Tell you what, and it is cranking out some heat. I'm very thankful I got this thing now. And it only cost me a bottle of whiskey if I am correct. So if you see right here, I just doubled up a piece of screen that I had out of one of these old windows. And uh, I just place it right here. And it just kind of stands on its own. up if I can remember how to open this thing should have a little button is this you no, it's over here okay I'm gonna set my phone down real quick Light like it's seventeen ninety nine. She's just going right along. There we go. You don't need a whole lot. Isn't that nice? I think maybe Americans should get used to living without power more often. Because I got a sneaking suspicion this whole country is going to experience rolling power outages. Now some of y'all are going to be asking, what's the deal with my oranges or my orange peels here? So in the winter time, I eat a lot of oranges. And when I used to have a wood burning stove, I used to put my orange peels in a pot of water. One, it smells great. Two, is once you cook these down... It makes like a nice orange tea, something my grandma showed me. Well, I think it's my grandma or my mom, I can't remember. But uh, if you add a little bit of, sh if you strain this out through like a coffee filter, add a little bit of sugar to it, it makes a nice little orange tea. And if you just keep after it, keep after it, or reducing it and reducing it, if you really want it to, you could add a little bit of uh, maybe a little vinegar to it, and it'd make a nice little citrus cleaner. And uh, so that's kind of what I'm doing. I've been doing this ever since I got my stove put in. Yeah, it's not boiling hot, but it's hot. But yeah, that's what that is. Plus, it adds humidity to the air because you know wood burning stoves they dry the air out a whole lot, and uh, it can get kind of aggravating. 
if you're uh, prone to nosebleeds and stuff like that. So that's what that does. Now I should have built me a platform and raised a stove up about a foot. It'd make it a whole lot easier to look in, but you know, lessons learned, you know. If somebody, I don't know who it was, made the comment that this wasn't a cook stove. Well, what is it then if it's got this? Okay, tell me that's not a cook stove. Do they just put holes in stoves just for the fun of it? That's a cook stove. Let's just see how cold it is. Hmm. Yep, that's pretty cold. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cold. Well, when the power goes out in the wintertime due to it being extremely cold, you don't need a refrigerator. <laughs> Gotta keep the important things cold. Why, kitty? Where are you, buddy? So you guys got a sneak peek last night of the newest addition to the family. And the noise you're hearing is this PB blaster penetrating lithium grease. So yeah, I was gonna get in the car. Uh, Friday, no. Yeah, it was Friday, I believe. Friday afternoon or Friday evening. Got in the car, driveway, just looking the way it looks. Went to go get in it, and the car wouldn't start at all. I had a fault on the dash that said parking brake fault. It wouldn't even let the car start. And I had to screw around and screw around and screw around trying to figure out how to get this car to run. And come to find out, there's an issue with the wiring or the connector on the driver's side rear caliper. And uh, sometimes it faults out. So I just threw a, a big bucket of hot water on it thinking it might be a you know, temperature issue or ice. And then about 30 minutes after that, finally I got it to work. And then that right there made me realize I can't be dependent on a car. Even a 2019 with very low miles. So that right there pushed me to go get this. Uh, I got to have a backup. I got to be able to make it to work in adverse conditions like we've been having. Uh, got to have four-wheel drive. I got to be able to get to work if they need me there. So second vehicle, 2007. Toyota Sequoia Limited four wheel drive, 230,000 miles. And it is, is, it's an impeccable shape. I crawled all up underneath of it yesterday in the parking lot from the dealership I bought it from. Had my inspection mirrors out. But this car was maintained by a fleet of detail guys and has been very meticulously taken care of. Runs good, the engine is just spotless everywhere. Uh, interior is super nice except for you know where i've thrown stuff around now making it mine yo uh, <laughs> but you can see it's a uh, 200 and what is it 35,000 miles a three row seat leather got new tires on it look at that sky ain't that pretty go away gray clouds go away snow you know, believe it or not, it is 50 degrees right now. That's awesome. The snow's melting good. And it's going to rain this evening. And tonight, they're calling for three quarter inches of rain. All this snow's going to be gone. I can't wait. I cannot wait. So Jamie really likes her new truck. <laughs> or her new SUV, I guess you could say. But there's some problems with it. She's getting older, and it's a little bit harder for her to get up and down, so I have to pick her up and put her in here. Of course, this is quite the leap for a dog. You know, it don't seem too high, but it is. Uh, and <clears throat> anytime I need to get out, she always goes to the front seat, you know, to come out the door I go out of. And you can see that console is all hard plastic. Typical 2000s, and uh, she really fumbles to get over that. So... What I'm going to do is I don't need 
three row seating. I don't even need a back seat technically. So what I'm gonna do is these seats remove. I'm gonna take out this back seat and the third row seat. And I'm gonna leave that one jump seat in the Sequoia. And so if, you know, if I've got a pasture or something, I got a place to sit. And then I'm gonna build a platform kind of like the overlanding people do. Because a lot of people camp out and live in these things. They're so spacious. It's almost like a Tahoe, I guess you could call it. Uh, maybe a little bit smaller. But it is a full-size SUV. Like a full-size, built on a full-size truck chassis, a Toyota Tundra. And, uh, but yeah, there's that one little rust issue I was telling you about. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out and I'm going to build a platform that raises this up about as high as the seat right here. I guess about as high as this right here. And, uh, that way, Jamie, I can let her get in here and she can just walk all over and she can look out the back windows. She can look out the sides and the door windows. That's the main reason I want to get the back window to work. Uh, I've got it. You'll have to watch on the other channel me fixing that back window, but it won't come down. I've got it to come down now, but I just think it'd be really fun for Jamie. She's back here. I can roll the window down and she can look out the back. Kind of like we did when we were kids when our parents had old station wagons that had the rear facing seats. <laughs> So, but at the same time, if I make this platform tall enough, you know, when you when I open the door, I can put slide out drawers in it and I can have tools and uh, all kinds of stuff in it. Cause I, I plan on doing some camping this year. I really want to get out and start doing some more stuff. Cause I, I, I can't just stay here all the time and work on this stupid trailer. So, but that's what I'm thinking about doing. That way these seats can be gone. Jamie can wander around here. I can have all kinds of room for cargo you know drywall and stuff like that and then that seat over there forward forward and it would make this thing so much more utilitarian and useful other than a people hauler because i really don't know a lot of peoples to haul so that's the plan yo you know even though i got this big heavy thing pulling in the driveway in this snow and it still slides sideways <sighs> i hate this damn hill so I'm pretty much determined this coming spring I'm going to devote some attention to leveling this area out here. It's going to take a little work, but I, mean, I hate not getting out of my driveway. And it's not much, it's just a little bit. I mean, I know it's a slushy and ice and stuff, but damn. So let's talk about underpinning. A lot of you all know this is the first mobile home that I've lived in. and. Ever since I bought this place, I've not had any underpinning. And I really didn't think I needed it because in the previous winters, it's gotten cold, but I dealt with it. It wasn't a big deal. Uh, you know, I could keep the inside nice and warm and toasty. And this is the first time I've put any kind of like actual underpinning under the trailer. I know there's a couple times I used all that foam. Uh, I guess it worked okay, but I really think by doing the plastic here, it really, really made a noticeable difference in the, the conditions on the inside of the trailer as far as maintaining the heat. When the power went out, it was cold in the trailer. It was about 45 degrees, but it was totally comfortable by my standards because, you know, I've got my insulated butt, bib overalls and stuff like that, and the animals didn't seem to mind it at all. But once I kicked in the little wood-burning stove and the kerosene heater, it was, I got run out of this place a couple times. I had to open the door or open the screen and open my windows and let some of the heat out. It got so dang hot in that place. And then, you know, the power came back on and everything was hunky dory. But, you know, I didn't realize how important the underpinning could have been because I'd never actually had it. Didn't pay no attention to it. Now that I actually have it, you know, I think uh, it might be <laughs> something I want to get done here in the near future because it, I was pretty impressed. So, now I'm kind of spoiled, I think. <laughs> well, with that said, folks, I hope you all like this video. And uh, I know this is more of a vlog type thing of what's going on, but I just can't be working on stuff all the time. I couldn't get any drywall, and I couldn't get out to go get any materials. So I'll be getting back after it here in the next week or so when I get a chance to get to the store and get things that I need. So anyways, I'll see you all later.